Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my loves. I wanted to do a reading for you guys for every single zodiac sign to see what you can expect or what is unfolding in your love life. You guys also stay tuned as we have the August readings going up as well. And like I promised, I'm going to be bringing you guys tons of videos, not only tarot readings, but we're going back to old school, teaching you guys spell work. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. If you've been a follower of mine for a while, don't forget to like. Let's get into it. We're going to begin here with Leo as it is kicking off Leo season. For my beautiful Leos, I want to congratulate you. Wishing you guys the brightest of blessings. So let's get into it. Let's see what Leo can expect when it comes to love and romance. I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love ascended master, spirits of divination. Please step forward. Allow me to open up as a vessel of communication. Allow me to see here since you and receive the messages for all zodiac signs. We're going to begin here with Leo, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Let's see what Leo can expect. It's probably going to be a little bit of a longer video as we're going to get uh, a bit deep into it. So let's see what is coming towards Leo in regards to love and romance. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Leo. Let's see what's going on with you guys. If you guys are interested in any of my personal readings or any type of personalized spell work, you can check the description box below you'll be able to find all of our links on there as well as i've been uh getting asked on snapchat as well as on my instagram how can you purchase the manifestation and the shadow book journal you can find all of that on the description box below in this video and all my videos actually so you can find all of that on there all right let's get into it leo let's see what's going on let's see what is going on here Leo, I feel that you guys are currently going through a situation where you're feeling like you've been put or you've been uh, you've been putting a lot of effort towards this connection or this relationship. Um, they're also give me one second. Let me try to raise this a little bit more. OK, so what they're showing me here is I feel like you guys are getting to a point of throwing in the towel or saying enough is enough in this connection. I feel like in the past, the person that you were dealing with could have potentially been very emotionally open. And I feel like for some of you guys, it almost felt like they were actually putting effort. They were actually trying. Um, you know what? I feel right now for a lot of you guys, it, it almost feels like you guys are out of sync or out of touch with like being on the same page. But I think that it's something important to understand um, that they could be challenged in different aspects in their life right now. Because what is needed in this connection is reciprocation more than anything. Um, but I feel like it's the way you guys are communicating or the way you're choosing not to communicate is what's creating the tension there, okay? Um, I do see as the days progress, the communication is going to get much more better. With the Wheel of Fortune here, the situation is definitely going to turn around. Um, especially right here with the Six of Swords. I see you guys being able to go towards calmer waters, being able to communicate on an emotional level, be open with each other, maybe even vulnerable. Um, I feel like for a lot of you guys, you're dealing with the person that is being challenged in certain aspects. So what they're telling me is for some of you guys, you're dealing with the person that could have potentially been challenged financially. And I feel like that's currently affecting their confidence or the way they carry themselves. For others of you, it could have been like a physical aspect where uh, they're being challenged in the sense that maybe for some of you guys, they're recuperating from something. Uh, maybe recently they could have, you know, um, it's something that is triggering in connection to their confidence. And it's more of an ego type of thing, like how they see themselves. And because they're struggling, it, it almost seems like they're very defensive because they don't like to be vulnerable, Leo. So again, I do see things progressing. I do see it getting better. I do see communication getting better. And you may even notice that in the next coming days, communication starts to go back to the way it was, um, especially with the magician and the page of cups. I feel like they're coming to you at a vulnerable state or maybe they're opening up to you. Maybe you're feeling like they've never really opened up 
And you may even be asking like, what the hell, what's going on? And the reason for this is because they've realized that, yes, it's going to put, it's going to take effort and energy for them to actually want to, you know, better the, the, the connection and the relationship itself. So I do see that, I do see this progressing into better and going towards calmer waters. I just feel right now on an emotional level that they may be dealing with something. Um, so what's coming to mind is, like I said, health issues, uh, maybe financial issues for others. It could potentially be like dealing with um, some type of emotion, something that's creating an emotional blockage in them right now where they feel like if they open up or if they express or they communicate, they may come across as weak and they, you know, don't want you to see them in that light. But again, like I said, I feel like there is definitely a conversation that's going to be coming about or that will be unfolding in the next coming days where you guys are able to get on the same page and fully express without feeling like you have to hold back because you're not trying to hurt their feelings or they're not trying to hurt your feelings. I feel like you guys are having a heart to heart conversation that brings or deepens this connection. OK, all right, my lovelies, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, what is unfolding for Virgos? In regards to love and romance. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Virgo. Let's see what's going on with you guys. If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment so I can continue bringing these this content to you guys. Oh, okay. We have the wheel, seven of wands, magician, page of cups, five of pentacles, six of wands. Interesting. For some of you guys, the first three cards are the cards that Leo had. So for some of you guys, you may be dealing with the Leo. Wow. Hanged man again. Interesting. Okay, um, Virgo, a lot of you guys are going to be experiencing a lot of changes when it comes to love and romance. For some of you guys, it, it, it almost feels like people from your past are coming back. Um, people that you were either connecting with, and this could be like friend type of thing, friendship type of energy, where they are either professing their feelings to you or they're showing you like they're acting or been acting a little bit more flirtatious. I feel like you guys are really drawing in a lot of people, a lot of eyes, a lot of attention right now, um, Virgo. However, and I feel that this is the last reading I did for you guys, the previous one where they spoke about your self-worth. Now, what's crowning your energy in this reading is the Five of Pentacles. And the Five of Pentacles is a representation of feeling like we are not enough or like we this is speaking directly about fears from your past virgo with the magician if you've had trouble or difficulty when it comes to relationships as an example things start to go great and then all of a sudden they come to a halt or all of a sudden it feels like it disintegrates, right? Or they pull away or whatever. The reason for this is because you've continuously have experienced either the feeling of being taken for granted or the feeling of being left. So it's almost as if you're still carrying that energy and you can have a windfall of luck when it comes to love, but it almost seems like you lose those opportunities because you're tainted, because you're carrying that energy or that feeling in your energy. So it's almost like, like I said, it's giving me the energy of feeling like things are going great and then all of a sudden they start to like fall apart. And it, it almost, it's almost like you can foresee it happening. But the reason why it's for like the reason why it's unfolding that way is because that's the same story you keep telling yourself. It's the same story that you keep revisiting in your mind. So it, it, let me give you an example. You could be experiencing 
almost this cycle in your life where you've been working in your self-worth, you've been working on yourself, you've been, you know, doing certain changes or maybe update a, a certain style or whatever, or you're getting into like a physical regimen, you're taking, you're looking good, right? So your confidence starts to go up and it starts to build up. Then you go out and people are being drawn and attracted to that energy, right? So you get suitors, you get people approaching you, you get people trying to holler at you, try to get at you. What happens in the in that in that process of getting to know someone or communicating with them? If you falter back to this mentality, to this energy of there's something wrong with me or I'm not enough or let's just say they've been texting you for a week nonstop and then all of a sudden next week on Monday they stop texting, you you fall into the energy of the five of pentacles, which is the feeling of, I, I already know where this is going. They start to pull back, they start. So it's a story that you continuously keep telling yourself. So like I said, I gave you the, I gave you the uh, example, right? Where you're confident, you're vibrating, higher frequency, you attract someone. You get to know them. Then you falter into the mentality or the old mentality. So your insecurities start to come up. And you, instead of being open to receiving the blessings, this person that came into your life that for some of you guys, it could be a person that does want, you know, something serious with you. But because you falter back into the five of pentacles, which is the state of mind of lack or not being enough or not having enough or comparing yourself then it puts you in a position where that person is no longer going to feel the connection because you guys are on two different frequencies. Do you see what I'm saying? So what Spirit is telling you is you have the potential to not only draw in, but to bring to you the person that is right for you. But when are you going to stop sacrificing yourself? When are you going to stop thinking the worst before it actually happens? When are you... Go, the moment someone shows you disrespect, when are you going to say, fuck this and walk away? Because if you don't, what's happening is like you could be super feeling yourself, being extremely confident, being in your energy. But the moment you feel like someone is rejecting you or like someone is treating you like a second option, whatever your fears may be, they start to come up. Then that confidence starts to weather and it starts to disintegrate. And that puts you in the mentality of overthinking and overanalyzing. And what Spirit is telling you is, Virgo, I'm trying to open the doors for you. I'm trying to bring to you what is for you. But it's going to come at the cost of you no longer being in the same mentality that you've been the past few days or few years. Do you get what I'm saying? And when it comes to having the need to walk away from any type of disrespect, any type of belittlement, any type of anything that makes you feel less than, you need to be courageous in walking away from that because only then are you going to realize that your confidence has nothing to do with outside. It has nothing to do with what's outside of you. It is within you. And the moment you know this, the moment you realize that you are in fact a magician, that you are the one that creates, you're going to start to see not only opportunities open up for you when it comes to love, but in other aspects, because it's no longer the mentality of lack. It's understanding that everything you want is everything. And this is something I tell my clients all the time. Everything that you want, you deserve. Because if not, your consciousness wouldn't be aware that that's what you want. So whatever you feel when it comes to relationships, whatever you feel that you have a tendency of doing, as an example, like I said, there is a little change there that happens. Let's say they don't text you for a day or, or not a day, but let's say they don't text you as much. Stop getting in your head and thinking, oh, they're walking away. Stop overanalyzing and overthinking because that is only a representation of the insecurities that you carry within yourself. Instead, put that energy back to you get back to doing things that you're passionate about or things that are going to keep you or distracted, things that are going to help you release that, that fear or that blockage when it comes to love and romance. And I assure you 
that for a lot of you guys, especially for you Virgo Risings, um, because of the Hanged Man here and the Page of Cups, uh, you, if you're a Virgo Rising, you may have um, Pisces in your seventh house, which is where we have Saturn sitting at. So it's like you guys are going into a different cycle in your life where only those that are worthy of you will come into your life and will show you through actions that they want something serious. But it's going to come down to you being the one to choose yourself or learning to choose yourself and not sacrificing certain aspects just to force a connection or a relationship. All right, Virgos. That was deep. <laughs> All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Libras in regards to love and romance. All right, Libra, let's see what's going on with you guys. We have the Justice card here. Ace of Swords. Five of Swords. The Strength card. The Hierophant. Page of Wands. High Priestess. Three of Cups. Ten of Wands. And the Seven of Cups. All right. All right, Libra. For some of you guys, you're dealing with a situation that has you like very confused. I feel like you guys are really wanting or needing at this point in time clarity. Um, with the five of swords in the past position, this is indicating to me getting to the point of getting to the point of realizing what you deserve or how you want to be treated when it comes to relationships, but you have an issue maintaining that. You falter back to your fears. You falter back to you go. It's like you take two steps forward and then you take five steps backwards. For some of you guys, you just have an issue point black, point black, point blank with the past. It's like you keep going or rushing to the past because you're scared of either being alone or you're scared that you're not going to find someone better or you're scared that you'd rather deal with the devil you know than someone new. Um, what's crowning your energy here is the Hierophant. So there is a higher commitment or a higher connection that brings commitment to you. But I feel for a lot of you guys, you doubt the strength that you have. It's like you constantly tell yourself, I'm not strong enough or I am not able to, or maybe the connection is too strong that I'm not able to walk away from this, that type of energy. But with the justice and the ace of swords right at the center, you have to realize that the power that you have, and this is something that a lot of people don't understand, sometimes holding on to toxic connections or relationships that are just not worth it, sometimes holding on makes you much more stronger because you're enduring that pain. You're enduring going through that difficulty. Whereas, you know, there's I, I many times when it comes with clients, I, I tell them, like, listen, you keep telling yourself you're not strong enough, but the fact that you're dealing with all this bullshit makes you that much stronger and that's what you don't realize that you don't understand a lot of the times it has more to do with comfortability it is the fact that if there is a breakup or a separation the first few days it's driving you insane right it's something you can't help but overanalyze or overthink about but as the days go by you start to realize you don't have that mental anxiety or that mental stress that that person made you feel especially because they always made you feel confused or they almost every single time you know like clockwork made you feel like you had to question that connection or like wondering where they're at or what they're doing or so when you start to experience the freedom that comes after walking away from things that are not worth it you realize you know what i was hella stronger for dealing with that nonsense because sometimes it's easier to walk away 
And I understand that. But again, I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's like you start to build your confidence. You start to work on yourself. You start to prioritize yourself. But then there is a moment or a temporary moment where you falter or where you fall and you are quick to go to the past or you're quick to go to dealing with the people, maybe even having sex with people that you know it is only a physical connection. But the reason why you do that is because it's comfortable and because it's easier to fall to that than to continue. I feel like there's a lot of anxiety with you guys when it comes to the future or you're experiencing having anxiety because of the future or because things are not going as quickly as you would want. If you're dealing with the situation where this person is constantly making you feel like they're hiding something, it's because they are Libra. It's because they are. It's because they're not being honest and they're not being transparent. If you're feeling like there's a third party situation here, if that's what you're sensing and that's what you're feeling and their actions are leading you to believe this, then there's merit in that. It's time you start listening to your intuition. It's time you start paying more attention to what you're feeling because if something doesn't feel good, it's because it's not to the betterment of you or it's not to the betterment of the experience that you're having. And this is something that I always, always tell my clients. Whenever something feels bad, when it doesn't feel good, no matter what it is, even if you can't understand why you're feeling that, because us as humans, we want to know, right? We have to see to believe. So it's like, I don't know why I'm feeling this way, but, you know, it just doesn't feel good. Well, it's because of whatever situation, circumstance, or person is making you feel that way. And something deep within you, meaning your intuition that is much more elevated than you are and your consciousness is telling you this is not right. It doesn't make sense. Or it doesn't feel good because it's not good for you. So let go of the doubts that you have. Stop telling the universe that you want them to show you signs because I feel like they have and you're just not paying attention to them. At this point, if it doesn't feel right, walk away from that Libra. Because by you doing this, the more you start to listen to your intuition, the more your intuition is going to be on point. Not only that, but for a lot of you guys, if you're struggling, like really, love and romance is really frustrating to you guys. And you're like, you know what? I'm over it at this point. I don't know who to tell who's being genuine. Or it's It's simple. Start listening to your intuition. If it feels good, it feels right, then it's because it is right. If it doesn't feel good, if it makes you feel queasy, if it makes you feel like they are, instead of making you feel secure, they're making you doubt yourself or they're making you feel very, very like confused, then that's not for you, Libra. All right, moving on. We're getting deep here, you guys. <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on with Scorpio. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what is unfolding for Scorpio when it comes to love and romance. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go, Scorpio. All right. We have the King of Wands. Oh, King of Pentacles. We have two kings here. Interesting. Eight of Cups, the Magician. Six of Cups, the Tower. Oof, Empress. Ten of Wands. Strength card. Five of Swords. All right. Scorpio. Okay, so what I'm hearing is for a lot of you guys, you are or have been experiencing a lot of major changes when it comes to your love life. And for some of you guys, you could have recently walked away from a connection. Um, you could have walked away from a connection and this person is either reaching out to you or will be reaching out to you. What they're telling you here is what they have shown you is what it is. Uh, Scorpio. What do I mean by this? I don't, 
what they're showing me is them coming back around and you thinking that this is destiny and that it's meant to be. What spirit is saying is that they are the reason why they come back into your life is because they seek your loyalty or they seek how you make them feel. So for some of you guys, you've made them feel special. You've been there for them. You've been their emotional support. You've been their cheerleader. You've been there, right? And this is a person that has really no, either no consistency or this is a person that is not emotionally evolved to be able to give you the commitment that you're looking for. Now, I see two kings, so this is speaking to me about two people that you're dealing with. Again, we're talking about the past one first, okay? So I see them coming back around. I see them watching your social medias. I see them wanting to crawl back into your life. That's if they're not already and you're not already entertaining them. But what they're telling you here is that there is lack of consistency. When are you going to realize that every time a person from your past goes or walks away, comes back around and you give them free pass, what you're actually doing is that you're allowing them to hold you from being able to release and walk away from that. So it's almost like an emotional manipulation that's happening here. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, you if you're connecting with this reading, you already know what I'm talking about. Because it's something that is recurring. It's something that... It, it, continuously keeps coming about with the tower at the bottom th this is a major major experience or lesson that you're going through because you refuse to learn this lesson so again a person from the past continues to have hold over you that's what it is that's what it comes down to and every time you allow them to come back into your life or every time you give them the opportunity to show to you that they are that they that they could be good in their word, they continuously keep letting you down. Why do I keep dealing with this pinky? Because you're not learning this lesson. The tower is here to remind you that if you want change, if you want a different outcome, then there has to be con actions that are connected to it that are different. And it's going to keep bringing these massive tower moments into your life until you realize, right? The magician and the empress. Until you realize that you are the one that decides. You are the magician. You are the empress. Whether you're male or female, doesn't matter. We're talking about energies here. You are the manifester of your life. You will continuously keep experiencing the same experiences so long as you keep allowing those lessons to go unnoticed or to go unlearned. The moment that you choose to put yourself first, to walk away from anything that is no longer serving you, that is no longer good for you, you are the empress or the emperor, whatever. What does the empress or what does the emperor do? They do not come off their throne, right, to entertain the masses. They allow the masses to come and see them. Do you get what I'm saying? Stop. Stop giving too much of yourself, Scorpio. And this is not just with relationships. If people are no, not doing the same effort that you do, stop repeating that cycle. Because then you leave yourself completely emptied, dealing with responsibilities that are not even of your own, for some of you. For others of you, you're carrying other people's baggage because you're trying to be good to them and they just take you for granted. What they're telling me here, Scorpio, is that when it comes to love and romance for you, if you want change, you need to be as intense, as passionate, as loyal, as giving to yourself as you do to others, as you do to the people that you're interested in. 
the moment you're able to do that is the moment that you're going to either stabilize the connection with the person you're dealing with. We're not talking about the past. We're talking about if you're dealing with anyone right now. That's how you're going to stabilize this connection. That's how the dynamic will balance itself out. By you learning that you are the prize. You see this king of pentacles? It's looking at the coin. It is understanding the value that it possesses. Or that it's holding or that it's being around. This is your partner or future partner understanding the value that you are, that you possess. But they cannot see that unless you see that for yourself, in yourself. Like I said, you're dealing with someone from the past that doesn't want to go away. That person is keeping you from your future. That person is keeping you from moving on. If you are dealing with someone new, do not jeopardize that because a person from the past all of a sudden wants to get it together. They're not. The tower is a recurring experience and it's, it's hitting us you know, tower moment after tower moment until we get it right. I get clients tell me all the time, Pinky, I'm such a good person. Why do I keep dealing with this? Because you haven't learned. Or people tell me, Pinky, I have such a great heart, such a kind heart. And obviously I can see that they do. And they're like, I don't understand what this lesson is. Listen, lessons goes both ways. Maybe for them, it's experiencing, living, or learning what unconditional love is, which you have done to them. Maybe for you, your lesson is understanding self-love and the importance of it. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you are new, hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Also, hit the notification bell so you guys can get notified. All right, here we go, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what is unfolding in your love life. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagis. All right, here we go, Sagittarius. Let's see. Right, here we go, Sagittarius. We have the Knight of Swords, we have the Four of Swords, we have Temperance, Four of Pentacles, Four of Swords. Wow. You guys have two four three fours. Wait, two fours. No, my bad, three fours. All right. The Sun card, the Queen of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Swords, and, okay, I pulled two cards, so we're going to keep them. The Queen of Cups and the Chariot card. All right. Sagittarius. All right, my loves. When we're talking about relationships and partnerships, Here's the thing, and, and I'm going to be very to the point. All of these readings are going to be to the point, you guys. That's why we're going a bit deeper, okay? Your issue when it comes to relationships, Sagittarius, is the Knight of Swords. You have a tendency of rushing into things. Um, and, and it's not so much about rushing into things. It's more so to do with rushing into like when you're dealing with someone, they become like your focal point And it's like you become like a horse with blinders. Right? <laughs> you can only see ahead. You can only see them. You only see them. They become your world. And that's an issue, my love. Why? Because love is only an aspect to our life. It's not our whole life. The moment we're challenged or the moment we're having difficulties in a relationship, it's like your whole world is falling apart. And the reason for this is because you've made them the center of your world. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what you're lacking when it comes to relationships and connections, what is lacking in the dynamic is the four of wands. The four of wands is structure. So you rush, either you rush into physical or you rush into like putting them on a pedestal without really getting to know them. Uh, for others of you, 
you throw yourself in balance. You put yourself in a, in an unbalanced situation where, like I said, you make them your priority when they haven't shown you consistency, when they haven't shown you. It's it, you need to take the approach of being practical. Go off of actions. Go off of what people are showing you. Because we have three fours here, this is an indication of, of exactly structure or the structure that is needed. Um, what's crowning you is the four of swords. So for some of you guys, you're having a lot of anxiety. You're going through difficulties. For some of you guys, you're experiencing no contact or the person that you were dealing with um, has pulled pulled back from you. There is this constant need to want to chase after them or to want to look for them or reach out, etc. Um, what Spirit is telling you here with the Sun card and the Queen of Pentacles is that you have to find, and I'm getting this message for some of you guys, it may not connect for others, it may. You cannot seek happiness outside of you. So if you've had a tendency of jumping from one relationship to another, and the reason for it is because you don't like to go through the healing process, because you don't like to be alone, because whatever the reason is, right? Whatever your shadow side needs to be healed. It's almost as if every single partner that you've been with or every person you've connected in the past with has a link to one another. And the reason for this is because you're carrying those experiences without fully healing. Now, I'm not speaking to those of you guys that have put in the work because I do see that for some. If you have been putting in the work and you've pulled away from dealing with people and you've kind of protected yourself or protected your energy, then there is love coming to you. And it's coming to you before this summer ends. Now, for those of you guys that do have a tendency of jumping from one relationship to another, there is a link there because you're carrying all this baggage from people that you've dealt with, that you've connected with. And what they're showing me here is you cannot find happiness outside of yourself. Sometimes we get into this mentality of I hate my current situation or what I'm going through. Life is so complicated. It would be so better, you know, if I had someone, someone that would be there to support me, whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, whatever it is. And if you're coming from that aspect, then you're only going to be dealing with people that are the same mentality, that are going to come to you broken, wanting you to save them. And often, oftentimes, you're the one that ends up either being felt or feeling like they broke you or feeling like like they chipped away at a part of your soul. So you go from these relationships without fully realizing that the happiness lies within you. You must first find happiness within you. You must first find true love within yourself. Fall in love with yourself, Sagittarius, is what they're saying. Fall in love with yourself. Now, for those of you guys that maybe you have a tendency from jumping from one relationship to another because you're, you know, even though you say you're looking for long term, you're not really looking for long term. I see a connection coming to you. And for some of you guys, you may already be in this connection where the deepening of this person's feelings for you is a bit daunting or a bit scary. And I see you guys like thinking about it or trying to rush out of that connection. But I feel like there is a purpose for this connection, Sagittarius. Now, I'm not speaking to those of you guys that got the previous message. I'm speaking directly to those that are in a connection right now where you feel like you're the one that wants to run out of this connection. I would advise for you guys to really allow yourself to not be guarded and to allow yourself to receive, to learn to receive love. You guys are givers, right? Sagittarians, you're ruled by Jupiter. You guys are givers. You guys are, even if it's for some of you out there temporary, 
you give, right? You give 100%, even if it's 15 minutes. <laughs> but what they're showing me here is that there's an end, a cycle that's ending here for you, Sagittarians. This is for those of you guys that have struggled when it comes to relationships and, like I said, have a tendency of jumping from one to another. This cycle is ending. And what they're teaching you is that you cannot find outside of you what you're searching for. Whatever you think you're searching for in a partner, you possess that. And those are qualities that you're looking for um, that you don't see in yourself. So learn. I would highly encourage you guys to do shadow work um, because you're ending this cycle of struggle. For a lot of you guys, you are meeting a person, like I said, by the end of summer. You're meeting a person that's coming into your life that is going to completely transform your life, especially with the queen here of cups and the chariot card it's almost like the moment that you're able to release your fears and open yourself up or the moment you're able to open yourself up to falling in love all over again with yourself Sagittarius and actually heal give yourself some space some time to heal from these toxic connections that's when this connection rushes in that's when this new person comes in for some of you guys it's a Leo for others of you, it's an Earth Energy, Taurus, Virgo, um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, but what they're saying, really, it is about structure for you guys when it comes to relationships. That is what you should be working towards, paying attention to consistency, paying attention to the effort that they bring to you or that they put into this connection and wanting or at least allow yourself to see a year time span, meaning make plans for these connections. Do you see yourself basically? Do you see yourself, you know, the long run? And if you don't, why entertain what's toxic or what will become toxic? Um, for those of you guys that are not looking for anything serious, learn to be honest and transparent, okay? Why? Because again, I must not remind you guys, Saturn in retrograde, you don't want to do people wrong because you're going to experience the consequences of that on a grander scale right now. So again, just be honest with yourself, Sagittarius, and with those around you. All right, moving on. All right, let's see what's going on with Capricorn. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. All right, here we go, Capis. Let's see what's going on with you guys. All right, Capricorn. We have the Justice card. Five of Cups, the Hermit, Seven of Pentacles, the Tower, Ace of Swords, High Priestess, the Empress, Two of Pentacles, and the Eight of Pentacles. Wow. Okay. All right, Capricorn. So we have the Justice card here right at the center indicating balance being restored or your balance being restored. So if you felt like someone recently could have taken advantage of your trust, of your love, of your devotion to them, um, justice will prevail and you will be shown. Um, think of it this way. This is exactly how they're showing me. Um, they're showing me like whatever you've been going through, whatever this person has been making you feel, you shall see them feel that or experience that okay this is only for some of you um if you feel like the person you were dealing with either left you hanging or they ghosted you or they pulled away and you were really focused in them and putting effort and it's almost like i'm hearing for some of you guys like was it even a connection or was it just in my head no they understood this connection they understood that they did not do good by you and you will see them be or behave or experience exactly what they made you feel, meaning that the ball will be in your court, Capricorn. 
Now, right at the top, we have the tower card. So this is definitely a tower moment, massive transformation here. Communication opens up if you're dealing, like, like I said, with the person that has pulled away. You're wanting to hear from them. You're wanting to know what's going on in their life. Five of Cups. They're definitely going to be coming towards you. They're definitely going to be reaching out. They're definitely... Go I feel for some of you guys, even if you felt like this person was really difficult to read or like this person... Um, I'm, I'm sensing for some of you guys, it's almost like they made you feel like they, like you never mattered and you're so offended by this, but the, sh or what's the word? Um, the shoe will be on the other foot, meaning you will see them chase after you or make it evident that they're looking for you or making it evident that they want to come back around. Why? We have the eight of pentacles here, which is the desire and want to revisit the past. How do we work it out, Capricorn? How can we make it work? How can we fix it, right? Now, here's the thing. The energy of the energy of the Two of Pentacles is, again, it's about balancing the scales, right? It's like you feel like in this situation or the situation you're dealing with, you have no control over this, right? And it's really pissing you off. The balance will be restored, Capricorn, but what they're asking you here is, do you really want them or do you really want this connection? Or is it only because you feel like it's not that easy? The advice position is the high priestess. This is understanding or having a deeper understanding of the lesson that you're going through. And this may be something that keeps coming up for you Capricorns where you realize you're aware of what you deserve. You're aware of what you bring to the table. You're aware that you have options. Is it only your fixation in people that are emotionally unavailable or emotionally unattainable to you that you become obsessed with? Like, ask yourself this question on, on a grander scale of things, okay? Why is it that the people that put effort for you, why is it that the people that are willing to go the extra mile, you either grow tired of or you lose interest in them or you never gain interest in them because they're just so easy. But the ones that make it more difficult for you are the ones that you literally become emotionally hung on or hung up on. And, and you have this obsessive energy to keep revisiting and revisiting like what you did wrong what happened in the connection, why this, why that. It's like what spirit is telling you is let go of the past, Capricorn. Let go of the past. Stop revisiting the past. Stop making yourself purposely sad about the past. Anyone that's not putting effort in attaining you and maintaining the connection or relationship is a, a person that is not worth your time, Capricorn. You have to keep in mind you're ruled by Saturn and Saturn rules time. So it's like if you were dealing with someone a year ago and they ghosted you or they fell off the map and then a year later they come back around and they're trying to reach out. You have to keep in mind that Saturn rules. It rules you. It rules time. So what does this mean? This means that if in that time it didn't work out, it's not going to work out. And that's their karma to come back around and realize I lost Capricorn and I have no access to Capricorn. But no, instead, you keep allowing people to come back around. And you keep repeating this cycle. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, especially with this full moon, you've either realized someone's like someone's true intentions or you came to the realization that like it's kind of like that aha moment where you look at them and you're like, what the fuck was I like? What did I ever see in this person? I mean, 
High Priestess, the Empress, Goddess Energy, God Energy. Stop watering yourself down for other people, Capricorn. Stop watering yourself down for people that you know. And, and this is something that I'm also hearing. For some of you guys, you've even dealt with people that you know they're not that smart. <laughs> I'm literally hearing that. Like, oh my God, they're not even that smart. Like, for some of you guys, it's something that like if they're not matching your intellect, if you're spiritual and they're not spiritual, it's not going to work out. If you have a certain way of living or and, and they're the opposite, not to say that opposites don't attract, but in this situation, what they're telling you is like Capricorn. Stop watering yourself down. I don't know why. I don't know why I heard like they're not even that smart. For some of you guys, maybe you, you're aware that the person you're dealing with, maybe it's not the brightest crayon in the box. For others of you, it could be something that turns you off about them. But because they're so unattainable or because they do this hot and cold type of thing, like you have a tendency of like you like them more than you actually do and it's only because they're emotionally unavailable. Stop trying to fix them, Capricorn. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Here we go, Aquarius. We have the World card, the Page of Cups, the Five of Cups, the Queen of Cups, the Devil, the Ten of Swords, Ten of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups. Wow, holy moly guacamole. Aquarius, what the fudge is going on with you guys? The reason I say that is with the world card right at the center, like your life is changing and is changing drastically. You're not even aware of it. For some of you guys, you're not even experiencing it just yet. Okay. Give me a second while I sip on my coffee. Okay. You're going through a massive transformation, Aquarius, where if in the past you felt challenged or you felt like shit just wasn't going your way that's quickly going to be changing and when i say quickly i am being a little bit over dramatic because when i said quickly i heard it, it's been a long time so for some of you guys you've been struggling with it for a while but here's the thing we have the devil card here crowning your energy for some of you guys you could be dealing with a capricorn for others of you you're just dealing with toxic people with the Five of Cups here, I feel like for some of you guys, there was a recent disillusionment or recent setback in regards to a connection. You were either tempted to completely walk away from the situation. For others of you, there could have been a breakup or some type of separation or something like that. And you're like, you know, you're being challenged, basically. Now, the thing is, what's crossing you, your obstacle, is the Page of Cups. What does that mean, my loves? That means that you're testing your destiny right now. You're not paying attention to the people that your guides are bringing into your life. And it's almost like the ones that are being genuine or authentic to you, you're taking them either for granted or... You're not appreciating the ones that are there for you because you're more focused on the person that treated you like shit. For some of you guys, you could have been dealing or coming out of some type of connection. 
And you could have recently met someone that was very emotionally available or this is a spiritual person for others of you. This is a person just that is very loving and nurturing, could be dealing with an empath. But I feel like this connection you're not so focused on because you're fo more focused on what was lost or the ending relationship or the past connection. I see you guys hung up on someone from the past. Your advice position is the Ten of Pentacles. Your advice position, Aquarius, is to start, start thinking long term. Start thinking about building. Start thinking about people matching your energy. You have the Ace of Cups and the Magician card here, so... The probability of you meeting someone new, or for those of you guys that recently met someone new, it's not a coincidence. This is a person that's destined to be in your life. And this is a person that you will build something with, whether you're ready or not, whether you're blind at the moment. And the reason I say that is because, you know, the magician in the Ten of Pentacles, it's like here, the universe is telling you, here it is, Aquarius, here's the person for you. Here is the person that is going to reciprocate your love. Here is the person that is going to bring to you that emotional fulfillment that you've been seeking, looking for, or wanting. But you're over here like, no. I, you know, why didn't it work out with this person, with this person from the past? Because you like toxic people. Or because you like to deal with with very complicated situations and that is part of your toxicity. That is a toxic cycle that you continuously keep going through. But again, like I said, whether you're ready or not, Ten of Pentacles, Magician, and the Ace of Cups is love is coming in. Whether you're ready for it or not, it's coming in. For some of you guys, you already met this person. But I feel like you're so fixated on the person that was lost or the person that manipulated you or the person that hurt you, right? For others of you, you already know who this new person is, but you're intimidated by the fact that the Queen of Cups and the Five of Wands, you're intimidated at the fact that they are wanted or that they get a lot of attention or that they have a lot of suitors. My advice in this situation, Aquarius, is honestly give yourself the opportunity. Reciprocate or reciprocation is something that's very important in any type of relationship, right? It's, it's not just a one-way street. It's a two-way street. If the person that you're putting effort and energy towards is not reciprocating that energy, stop wasting your time. Realize that there's something within you that likes that toxic cycle or that toxic traits about a person when you're able to decipher that, when you're able to realize, yeah, you know what? Um, this person is toxic because of this, because of that. And then you start looking towards the past and past relationships or past connect. There's something that you're very connected to toxicity. For some of you guys here with the devil, either... You get a thrill out of dealing with people that are either in a relationship or that are dealing with the next, but they kind of tell a story, but in reality, they're still with the ex. Or you just see that they are not ready for any type of emotional commitment, and there you go, giving yourself or giving your heart to them. And if you are dealing with someone new and you feel a little bit intimidated or you feel like this person gets a lot of attention, there is a difference, Aquarius. And I, and I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you guys this, but there is a difference between dealing with someone that loves attention and there is a difference between someone that gets attention. 
Do you get what I'm saying? Because a person can get a lot of attention. But if they don't crave that, it's not something they seek. And that is a person that has no problem. If they're dealing with someone, they have no problem putting other people in their place if they kind of try to cross the line. Whereas if you're dealing with, maybe for some of you guys, it's that. That you're used to dealing with people that are very wanted and that love attention because there's something about their confidence that really gets you going. But at the same time, that's usually what lets you down or that's the reason why the relationship breaks because they entertain other people. Look around right now, Aquarius, because you have love around you, whether you're aware of it or not. <laughs> Stop reminiscing about the past or wondering why it didn't work out, especially, especially with Pluto's energy. Like, you guys, your life is about to be transformed. It's for some of you guys, you're already experiencing this, but you have to be mindful of what the universe is teaching you, what they're showing you right now. Instead of complaining about it, pay attention to it because it's teaching you something. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Pisces. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. In regards to love and romance. I have a lot of Pisces in my life, you guys. More than I care to admit. <laughs> and all of them are really going through it. Well, not all of them. There is a few that I feel they're going through certain revelations. But the rest are really going through it. Especially when it comes to relationships. All right. We have the Five of Wands. The Ten of Pentacles. The Ace of Cups. The Hermit, Ace of Swords, wow, two Aces, Queen of Wands, Six of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, Judgment, and the Empress. Okay. All right, Pisces, for some of you guys, you're experiencing a lot of confrontations. It's almost like people just are just being triggered by hearing your voice for some <laughs> Oh my goodness. The reason I say that is for those of you guys that are like in a long-term committed relationship or a marriage, it almost seems like you guys are just constantly fighting and bickering. And the reason for this is because at this point, I feel like you guys have been trying the best you can to keep it together. Um, trying the best you can to work through something. But I feel like for some of you guys, especially if you're dealing with fire energy, um, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, I feel like you've put in what you had to put in, Pisces, and at this point, it's time for you to embrace new beginnings. You have the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Cups, crowning your energy and the energy connected to the past. So for some of you guys, there was a recent conversation or recent reconnection or some type of conversation that came up with someone from the past. You have the Hermit card here, becoming a little bit more antisocial or maybe more secluded than usual. And for some of you guys, it's because you are going through some massive transformation when we're talking about relationships or marriage for some of you. But the main focal point here right now is reciprocation, Pisces. Are you getting in return everything you're putting in? to this relationship, to this connection. Because what I'm being shown is no matter how much glue you put, if someone keep like an example, they're showing me a poster and then I'm putting glue on it and I'm putting the picture on it. No matter how much glue I put, if I keep yanking it out, it's going to fall. It's going to keep falling. So I feel someone in this connection purposely either hindering the relationship or purposely testing the relationship or purposely testing you, Pisces. And it's like, when do you get to the point of realizing that you're so busy watering their cup that you have completely, like, not realized that your cup is empty? For some of you guys, you feel extremely lonely in this relationship or in this connection. Why? Because you feel like you're just not getting anything. 
at this point. Nothing. And the thing is, You know that this connection for some of you guys, you've either had the aha moment or the lucidity of connecting with your consciousness and being aware that what this relationship has taught you or what it's teaching you is to love yourself. It's like they're forcing you to love yourself. When are you going to start being honest with yourself, Pisces? It's the realization of if they're not putting effort and they're not going above and beyond the way I am, then there's something wrong. And then you try to put yourself in their shoes to try to realize or understand why they are the way they are. But no matter what scenarios you create in your head, in every single scenario, you choose them, Pisces, and they don't. When do you realize that if people wanted to, they would? If your girl or your guy wanted to, they would. They're choosing not to. When do you stop wanting to pour into a cup that is completely filled to the point where you've emptied your own cup? You're constantly sacrificing your time, your effort, your energy, your money. And all this person does is create anxiety, stress. They have you questioning your self-worth. They have you questioning every decision you make. For some of you guys, you're dealing with a narcissist. You're dealing with the person that has a tendency of either belittling you in front of people or speaking to you in, in a condescending way that it often makes you feel stupid and at this point you're kind of starting to believe that and it's because they've repeated it so many times you know what you need to do pisces judgment and the empress you know what you need to do at this point at this point you need to be honest with yourself at this point you need to stop sacrificing every single aspect of your life, every single thing about you to try to accommodate them. Yes, you're a mutable sign, but that doesn't mean that you completely become that person where like only a shadow of who you were remains. You have to make the decision of being honest with yourself. If you're asking for signs, your spirit team keeps bringing you signs. I feel like at this point, you're at your wit's end. You're going to start to see almost like the it's going to feel almost like the universe is really pushing you like towards a different direction. And the reason for this is because You have to free yourself. For some of you guys, you're holding on to this connection because of responsibilities or because expectations of other people. For some of you guys, you may even be dealing with two people. But there's one that you're there because of responsibility or because you just don't want to give up. But at this point, what they're telling you is you have to be honest with yourself. Never allow anyone to dim your light. If they're continuously being condescending to you or belittling you or telling you that you're stupid or questioning everything you do, that is not a person that loves you because a person that loves you is never going to break you down. They do the opposite. They build you up. All right, Pisces. We're getting heavy ass readings, you guys. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. 
Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. If you guys like these videos, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe. If you guys are interested in any personal readings or any of the services that we provide or the Shadow Book Journal, you can find all of that on the description box below. You guys hit that notification bell also so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. All right, Aries, let's see what's going on with you guys. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. We have the Page of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands, the Queen of Swords, the King of Swords. Wow, Temperance. <clears throat> Seven of Swords. Three of Pentacles, Five of Cups, Knight of Wands, and the Queen of Cups. All right. So immediately what I'm seeing here is king and queen of swords so you could potentially be dealing with a soul tied connection a soul meet someone that has been for some of you guys in your life for quite a while we also have here the queen of cups all right aries what i'm seeing here is with the page of pentacles there is something that you've been refusing to accept. You're refusing to take for what it is. The Ace of Wands, representing your energy, Aries. Um, I feel like there's a connection that you've been denying yourself from. For some of you guys, you're scared. For others of you, you're dealing with someone that is scared as shit because of this connection. The temperance is having the need to restore the balance. For some of you guys, you were dealing with someone where the connection was very intense. And you probably were either triggered or your defense mechanism kicked in. You started dealing with someone else. So there could have been some type of pulling away or some type of ghosting. This could be vice versa. As it, it is a general reading. But what they're showing me here is that you're not being honest with yourself, Aries. You're de denying yourself the connection. Denying yourself the opportunity to see where this can potentially go. And I feel like some of you guys are either, either have already jeopardized this connection or others of you, you're dealing with the pulling away. You're wondering why they're pulling away. And the reason for it is because you're not reciprocating the energy. It's like both of you guys are standing in the king and queen of swords energy. You're overthinking this connection. You guys are creating more obstacles than there should be. For some of you guys, you're dealing with someone that has had or maybe they've been single for quite a while. They have issues opening up. They have issues being vulnerable. But I feel like... I feel like right now, for a lot of you Aries, you could... It, it's, it, it's coming off almost like jeopardizing the connection or pulling away from the connection because you feel it's so intense. But at the same time, there's a fear in you that it's not reciprocated. But in reality, what's happening is if you can see the king and the queen, it's like you guys are giving each other your backs. It's like you guys are purposely pulling away from each other because you guys are not speaking your emotions or your feelings towards each other. For some of you, there may be a third party situation. But if you're aware of the third party, I feel like for some of you guys, it's you that started dealing with someone else. But it's like both of you guys are denying this connection. Because maybe you guys are not comfortable being vulnerable. I think I've been doing this reading for you guys for like the past two months. There is a, a, a powerful connection, but it's like you guys are so much in your head. Like 
you think of this person 24 7 Aries and this person is thinking of you 24 7 but it's like you guys go on with like even if you guys talk you guys go without fully expressing what you guys are feeling for each other and the thing is that timing is like timing is not in you guys' side right now because it's almost like you guys are so guarded and you guys are like hiding your feelings for each other. So you guys are making this connection much more difficult than it should be. For some of you guys, you weren't even talking to them for like you could have not been in contact with them for a bit, but communication has opened up or will be opening up. But again, I feel like this connection is reciprocated. You guys are feeling the same way. For some of you guys, it's that they're emotionally like scared as fuck to open up and you are too. So it's like you guys are going on dealing with each other without fully expressing, without letting your guard down. So it's like, it's like playing mind games. Both of you guys are playing mind games. And it's unnecessary because the connection is there. I feel like it, as it progresses, communication will be better. But I still feel like you guys are being challenged in the sense of, are you willing to put your guard down? Are you willing to open up? Are they willing to put their guard down? Are they willing to open up? I feel like for a lot of you guys, you know who, who they're talking about because you you know, you know exactly who they're talking about because this connection feels very strong. But you know what's standing out to me? If you can see the queen right here at the very bottom, it almost looks like, it looks like a cup with water, a bowl with water, and it's like caged. So I feel like you're dealing with someone that was really hurt in the past and like they created this protection barrier where it almost seems like their love is unattainable or like they're just not like they would never be vulnerable. But the fact is that they have it under caged. This is a person that has a very, very loving and pure heart but they've been hurt. I feel like if you open up and communicate or express your feelings, Aries, you could potentially experience a very powerful connection. But you have to be vulnerable. Um, and I feel like you're dealing with someone that has potentially gone through the things you've gone through. Maybe not the same circumstances or situations, but you guys are very similar. Similar in the aspect where you guys are kind of on survival mode. Um, but again, I feel like you, both of you guys share this connection. And both of you guys feel for one another the same thing that the other is feeling. So someone's going to have to budge. I don't see no one budging, but... My advice is if you're connecting with that message, Aries, open up. <laughs> Good luck with that. All right, moving on here. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus in regards to love and romance. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus. All right, here we go, Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. All right. We have the Seven of Pentacles, the Ten of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, the Six of Cups, Two of Cups, Ace of, whoa, Ace of Swords, Judgment, Empress, Lovers. Oof, Four of Swords. Okay. All right, Taurus. I feel for some of you guys, you're dealing with a connection that could be connected in some shape, way, or form to your business or finances. This could be in connection to your workplace. For others of you, for others of you, you are, 
there was someone in your past. I see you guys comparing. So for some of you guys, you could have had someone in the past that it almost feels to me like the one that got away. And every person that comes into your life, you have this tendency of comparing them. But I feel like the person you were then is no longer the person you are now. So how much reality is in that when you reminisce about the past? Do you get what I'm saying? It's, it's almost like you've created this idea of the person that you dealt with in the past to now every person that you deal with, like you compare them. And this could be negative or this could be positive. For some of you, I mean, it's negative altogether. And the reason I say that is, let me clarify. If you dealt with someone that felt like the one that got away, you love them and you look back now to like the past people that you've dealt with after them, it almost feels like I feel sad because that was the one person that treated me good. But you've built them up so much in your head that every person you deal with now could never meet them even halfway because it's so much built up in your head. Like there's an illusion tied to that. Now for others of you, it could potentially be that the person from the past was very horrible to you, that you have a tendency of comparing the people that you deal with now, or you don't allow people that you deal with now to get close enough because you don't want to go through that hurt, through that pain. However, You're getting ready to let go of this. You're letting go of certain things that have kept you from either connecting or from becoming emotionally available. Even if at some point you felt like you were emotionally available, I feel like deep down, if you really think about it, you're going to realize that you weren't. And it's because there's so many fears attached to this. Again, it could be things from the past. It could be experiences that you just don't want to relive anymore or don't want to experience but you're going through this cycle Taurus where you're pouring a lot of love into you you're pouring a lot of you're doing a lot for yourself for some of you guys you've been putting in the work for others of you you've been doing shadow work you've been healing you've been so what's happening is that your energy is becoming this great um vibrational energy on a high on a, on a high aspect where all that love that you're pouring into yourself whether you're treating yourself whether you're making it a habit of taking yourself out on a date whether it's trying different foods whether it's going to new social settings even if you go by yourself whatever it is it is considered self-love and what's happening is that by you doing this slowly but surely your fears are starting to diminish and all this love that you're pouring into yourself or all this making sure that you put yourself first what you're actually doing is you're drawing in the people that are meant to come into your life the people that are going to match your frequency we have judgment and the empress card here you're coming into your own or you're coming into your power taurus you're realizing what you deserve you're realizing that you have so much to give you have so much to offer and you're i don't want to because what they're showing me is almost like being unapologetic about what you want in life but at the same time i feel like you're taking ownership of it because you're actually putting in the work and by you doing that, what's happening is, again, lovers, six of cups, I see a soulmate coming into your life. For some of you guys, the soulmate will be coming into your life sometime between the middle of August uh, all the way to October. But there is a soulmate connection that's coming in that is going to draw out all your fears about love, all your fears about not 
finding someone that is going to reciprocate your energy, someone that is not loyal, like this person is going to meet all of your expectations. If you're currently dealing with a relationship where there is a bit of ghosting going on right now, I feel like this person is in essence doing you a solid Taurus. And what they're asking you is that at this point, you got to pay attention to the people that are going out of your life and the ones that are coming in. And the people that are going out of your life, like I said, even if they've like ghosted you for a week, you haven't heard from them. Like don't make room or space for them to come back around, even if they do, which more than likely they will because they always do. Um, but make room and make space for the person that is right for you because I feel like the universe is removing certain people from your life because you've been working or you've been putting a lot of effort and energy towards your aspirations, towards things that really get you going or get you excited. And that is you aligning yourself to your higher frequency that you can therefore only attract high vibrational people. And again, like I said, those of you guys that have been single for a while, do not be surprised if by now all the way to October, you meet someone that is going to feel like home. And you're not even going to realize no matter how tainted you may feel you are, Taurus, I feel like that guard is going to come completely crashing down and you're not even going to realize when it happens. Good for you, Taurus. <laughs> all right, moving on. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Gemini. Let's see what's going on in your love life. All right, Gemini. We have the Ten of Swords. You're closing cycles, Gemini. You're closing cycles for some of you guys. You've been holding on to someone from the past for quite a while. You're finally feeling like you're able to release or maybe you haven't even realized it. But you start to notice that there's things that you're wanting to do that maybe you weren't that open to doing. Um, whether it's dating, whether it's putting yourself out there, whether it's being a little bit more social, especially because the Empress here is crossing you. This is the obstacle you need to overcome. You need to start working on building your confidence. For some of you guys, you're ending a cycle where you were dealing with a person that could have affected greatly either how you felt about yourself, how you viewed yourself, or how you got to where you are now. It's almost like you kind of blame that experience or that person for the circumstances that you're dealing with. However, Spirit is telling you that you are elevating yourself. Why? Because you're closing that chapter. You're closing that cycle. It's becoming aware or you're becoming self-aware of who you are, of what you deserve, my loves, with the world here. Things are going to start to turn out for the better for you. And again, I feel like it has a lot to do with realizing or stepping into your power. It's like you're being unapologetic about the shit that you do, Gemini. Anything that you felt shame about in the past that could have potentially been connected with the person that you're dealing with, I feel like you are finally liberating yourself from that mentality or that way of thinking or how they made you feel. And you're starting to step into your power. You're starting to get momentum, to gain momentum. And through this process, I see a connection that's unfolding for you. I feel like for some of you Geminis, you don't know who this person is yet. You haven't met them. Um, could potentially be coming into your life the first week of August. For others of you, it's going to unfold in different timelines, but I do see a new connection coming in, and this is definitely someone you're not dealing with. Could potentially be a Cancer. For others of you, it could be a Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer. Love is coming in for you, Geminis, whether you're ready or not. I feel like there is... I feel like you guys have been guarded for a very long time. For others of you, you could have felt at some point that you weren't enough 
or that you didn't deserve better than what you've experienced. But you're starting to see... that you're a good person. That you give unconditionally when you are genuinely and authentically in love. And you're realizing that you want to feel love. That you want to feel accepted or seen or understood. And anything that does not match that energy, you're walking away from very unapologetically. You're walking away from feeling sorry for yourself, Gemini. Now, this is going to connect with a lot of you guys in very different ways. For some of you guys, it's realizing this person that I was dealing with was a piece of shit and I'm not dealing with that anymore. For others of you, you're realizing this piece of shit, I've allowed them to step all over me, to take advantage of me, no longer. For others of you, you're realizing that yes, you do deserve to be treated better, that you are better, and that you're no longer going to be living or reliving the past, that you're walking away from that. You're closing the door on that because there's better to come. Especially with the world card and the eight of pentacles for some of you guys this connection or this person that's coming in you can meet them while working or at work or it could be someone that you work with. Um, I feel like things are going to start to align for you in a very positive way Gemini there is a lot of powerful energy here the chariot ace of swords the empress the world two of cups king of cups it's like. You are realizing what the fuck you deserve and that is exactly what you're asking the universe and that is exactly what the universe is bringing to you. However, crucial and very important, do not allow people to breadcrumb you. For those of you guys that broken up or there's a separation and this person reaches out once in a blue moon, stop entertaining them. Stop allowing them to think that they can always come back to you. Stop being their safe place. Stop allowing them to keep putting you in the back burner. They don't want to work it out. They don't want to commit to you. They don't want to treat you the way you treat them. Show them the door. Do not be a placeholder for anyone, Gemini. That is going to be very important for you. The moment you start to do this, the moment you start to enact this, there's going to be so much power coming behind you. It's like you're stepping into your power and there's going to be not only massive opportunities for love here, but there is a genuine, authentic connection that's coming in for you. All right, my loves. Powerful stuff there. All right. Moving on. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Last but not least, let's see what's going on with my Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, let's see what's going on with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. All right, Cancer. We have the Knight of Wands. We have the Queen of Cups, the Two of Cups, the King of Cups, Seven of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, Strength Card, Four of Pentacles, and the Ten of Cups. Okay. Very, very interesting. Okay. The reason I say very interesting is the moment I seen the Seven of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, and the Seven of Swords, I feel like for some of you guys, you either were dealing with someone from the past that 
could have came to an end, but then decided to like still deal with them. For some of you guys, you, you guys have been having this physical connection and you've been expecting or wanting to rebuild or to solidify that connection. I don't see that happening, Cancer. And what they're telling you is that you have to be practical about this, okay? What do I mean by this? If you're confused about this person, meaning they keep telling you that they want to work it out and you're having sex with them, but they're not really trying, remove sex from the table and see how quickly they walk away from that. Like, if you're confused and at this point you're like, I want to know exactly what it is, that simple. Take sex off the table and see how quickly they either ghost you or they don't communicate. Things that have not worked out in the past with people from the past, there is a reason for this. There is a reason for it, Cancer. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt if all they do is keep letting you down. You got to be honest with yourself. You put yourself in these predicaments and then you look at the sky and you're like, oh my God, universe, like why does it have to be me? Well, because you're not learning certain lessons and you keep repeating them. And it's about consistency for you. What do I mean by this? Are they being consistent? Are they putting effort? Are they making sure that whenever you feel frustrated or whenever you feel like you need to express something, do they make you feel like you're being heard and understood? Or do they make you feel like you have to hold back or maybe bite your tongue in certain aspects because you don't feel comfortable fully expressing what you're feeling? Do you get what I'm saying? You got to be true and honest with yourself and who you are authentically. And you, Cancer, to feel emotional support is crucial for you guys. It is very important. You need to feel safe with the person you're with emotionally. You got to feel like that person is going to, you know, have your back. That person is going to emotionally give you the safety net that you need. So if they're making you feel like you got to bite your tongue, that person is just not for you. If all they're doing is coming around you whenever they feel like it, and then they ghost you or you don't hear from them in weeks, that person is not for you, Cancer. Stop allowing these people from the past to keep coming back around. Why? Because the universe is trying to bring to you what is meant for you. Now, this is not to be confused, okay? And the reason I say not to be confused, I see the king and the queen of cups. For some of you guys, you're dealing with the soulmate connection. But only if you've recently been dealing with this person. Meaning, if you've been dealing with them for longer than two months, they're not talking about that. If you've been dealing with someone for the past two months or, you know, shorter time than that, then this is a soulmate type of connection. But it's going to be very crucial and very important to be transparent and to be honest. And like I said, one of you in this connection is guarded or they fear opening up completely. So they're expecting or wanting for you to show them that you have feelings for them. Now, what they're showing me here is that as time progresses, again, and, and even if you've been dealing with someone, let's just say for like a month, and you haven't had any physical connection with them, meaning you haven't had sex with them, don't have sex with them, Cancer. Don't have sex with them. Get to know them on a deeper level. For some of you guys, this is something you've done in the past. Stop doing that. And the reason I say that is even if, right, even if we have soulmate connections, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be something long lasting, right? Sometimes we can come across them because obviously it's a soul connection and we have a soul connection with them. It means that they have to bring some type of awareness to us or we have to bring some type of awareness to them. So I feel like this person has a tendency of like either protecting themselves or not being emotionally available 
or they're so scared of opening up because this is the type of person that falls head over heels over someone. So maybe their go-to is to have physical connection because then they get over the fact that they have that desire and that desire is what drives them. So it, it's kind of like, think of it this way. It's giving me the scenario of someone that jumps into having sex with someone because the moment they have them, they lose interest so that no one gets hurt in the process, meaning they don't get hurt emotionally invested in the connection. But if you actually keep yourself from falling into that trap and allow them to actually show you and reveal to you who they really are, the more you guys get to know each other, the more you realize that you have a lot of things in common and there is potential here for something more than just a fuck buddy situation. Whereas if you've already jumped into that connection, my advice is take sex off the table. Take it off the table and allow them to show you and prove to you. And if they're not willing to do that, then show them the door. Because then you're the one that's going to get emotionally invested and hung up on them. And I'm not sure that coming back from that, they're going to be able to or even want to open up to you. And it's not to say that this is a bad person. What I'm saying is that this person does have a habit of being physical because they're so scared of being vulnerable. Now, for those of you guys out there that have been dealing with someone from the past and you're able to walk away or willing to walk away, now is the time to do so, Cancer, because I do see a soulmate connection coming in. Especially if you were dealing with an ex that was a cheater or someone that was only coming to you or hitting you up at night. Stop allowing people to use you. Even if you've convinced yourself, Cancer, well, I'm getting mines. No. That is just your way of excusing the fact that you still have feelings for them. And that's the reason why you're willing to only share certain minutes with them because you get to be around them. Do you get what I'm saying? Like if you're dealing with someone that you keep like, uh, you know, booty call or whatever, and you keep telling yourself, well, at least I'm getting mine. At that's your way of excusing the fact that you know you still have feelings for them. You haven't moved on from them and you're willing to just settle with that type of connection. If that is a cycle you've been doing, you need to outgrow that cycle, my loves. And only through that are you going to be able to draw in the person that is right for you, that is going to give you the emotional safety and the emotional longevity of knowing that you guys are building something solid and on a solid foundation. All right, my loves. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. If you did, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.